Okay, so uh, I've started off the presentation just with a excerpt from the Biocommons strategic plan. Uh, and so in essence, the Biocommons is intended to be a new enhanced workflow analysis, data access and portability capability. And that's specifically for life science research. And it's built into both national and institutional e infrastructures. And so the whole idea is to democratize access to fit for purpose compute um, and do a better job with the infrastructure that we currently have. Uh, the Biocommons draws very heavily on its communities to determine their requirements. Um, and these requirements will be unique for each community and any solutions that we then try to work towards will be tailored to those communities. Um, so those communities are made up of uh, consortia, which um, effectively represent science drivers uh, for Australia. So those are consortia like Oz Mammals Genomics, uh, Reptile, um, Amphibian and Reptile Genomics. Um, we also have a series of data production facilities that support those consortia. And we now have Biocommons communities of practice, which aim to draw together um, both practitioners, but effectively anyone interested in those particular fields to the same place so that they can share um, share their knowledge, but also build um, on requirements collected from, uh, from both the production facilities and big consortia. And of course, um, embedded in all of these communities, we have that small group of bioinformaticians who are, who are um, the developers of new tools um, and approaches in bioinformatics. Um, so when we talk about fit for purpose compute, this is the way that I envision um, things to be set up right now. Um, so the research projects will have bioinform bioinformaticians embedded. These bioinformaticians, they develop methods and they're experts in infrastructure utilization. But what we would really like to have is bioinformaticians um, at the core, because they're the ones developing methods. And what we'd like to see is that they contribute bleeding edge methods. Those methods are actually fit for purpose uh, based on the infrastructure that's available. And those research projects can actually access those methods, right? So um, broad democratizing access um, to bioinformatics. And so that leads to that statement. And this is one that I started with as well. So democratized access to community supported bleeding edge tools and workflows. And um, so um, this brings us back to how we actually discover those priorities. So like I said, we're um, heavily influenced by community requirements. Um, this is the process that we go through. Um, we identify research and communicate uh, with these communities in order to distill their requirements into a physical document. Um, there's an example of one of those documents here um, and they're um, the ones for the genome assembly and genome annotation communities are available on um, the Australian Biocommons Zenodo uh, account. And finally, uh, we move to the deployment um, stage where um, potential solutions to the challenges documented are actually um, prototyped and in close consultation with the community, um, we make those solutions as fit for purpose as possible. Um, a good example of that from the genome annotation community is um, the Apollo Genome Annotation Service um, that the Biocommons is currently working on deploying. I also wanted to quickly cover how we are actually addressing um, requirements at scale. One of the ways that we are doing that is through uh, what's known as the Bring Your Own Data Project. Uh, this is a national Biocommons led activity um, that is looking to develop not only graphical user interface, but also command line interface um, solutions. So basically make um, best practice bioinformatics available uh, through both of these platform types. 
Um, we have direct partnerships with uh, Australian infrastructure um, to achieve this. That includes um, the ARDC, so the Australian Research Data Commons, Australian Access Federation, RNET, um, institutional partners, but also the big computational infrastructures that exist in Australia. And there's a really big focus on outcomes and services. And these are things like deploying platforms, tools, and data, um, solving data movement and identity challenges, but also um, creating a knowledge base that people can easily access to make um, the bioinformatics ecosystem a little bit less opaque. Uh, and finally, I just wanted to cover um, the basically the aspects of FAIR um, that some of the activities we're involved with cover. Um, the first one is the consolidation of knowledge. Uh, so that knowledge base concept that I mentioned, um, the very first iteration of that is a um, searchable tool list that's been deployed via GitHub by the Biocommons, which um, makes it easy to compare across our major infrastructures what tools are installed. So that's the findability um, aspect. The next one is that we're very interested in highlighting the right workflow on accessible systems um, and describing the most straightforward path to accessing a workflow. So it's one thing to tell people that something's available, but we want it to then also be accessible um, on those systems. The third one um, in terms of interoperability is in terms of making the puzzle pieces fit. Um, the um, existence and accessibility of fit for purpose methods isn't the only issue. Um, you know, there's um, data movement challenges. And so one of the things that we're looking to do is streamline the path between data capture and analysis and make sure that that's a less convoluted path um, for, for our life sciences community. And finally, clarifying what the, bio, what the bioinformatics community is actually working on. Um, and so in terms of reuse, there's a heavy focus on taking priority tools and workflows, going through a series of activities for those on um, our compute infrastructures. That includes things like installation, testing and optimization, benchmarking if it's warranted, um, but importantly, the documentation of how those tools um, run and what the outcomes were. And this allows us to document with a local context, make all of those things available via GitHub. Those are just some example screenshots of what, what's available um, so far for our documentation. And then make sure that that's provided back to the community and that the community agrees that um, what's provided is fit for purpose. So thanks for your attention. That is a whirlwind tour of um, the Biocommons and some of the things that we're involved in. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, even after the meeting, you can reach me at the email there on that slide.